selection for June 24th, 2019 to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's for approval of the minutes from June 10th. So moved. Second. Any discussion or corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. First selections comments. Um, I have a couple of comments about things that are on the agenda, but just to um, kind of uh, put a couple of things on the table. I was asked to talk about the beach pass process, and um, <clears throat> I will admit that we're having some difficulties with it, but the good news is we've had over 1,300 people have, have gotten passes already, or 1,300 passes issued. Over half of them have been done online, so we're getting there. We're finding there's some glitches with the, the, the um, especially the online system. I think part of it is the, the instructions weren't written really very clearly, and the other part of it is people like me who just don't do very well working with tech equipment. So, um, but we're working on it, and um, I think um, in a week or so, you know, things are going to be a whole lot better. But we we got a lot of people processed through here today, so um, it's. It's not ideal yet, but we're getting there. Um, the other issue was the Island Avenue School. And um, we did sign the lease with Our Lady of Mercy Pre uh, Preparatory Academy last week. And so they're planning on getting into the school, I believe, on August 1st. That's those two things. Number four is public comment. No. Gus Harbath, 34 Elkberry Circle. I had communicated with you guys the last couple of weeks on charter review, mm -hmm. and I was wondering where you folks would stand on that, whether you're going to consider I think we're, I think we're all in agreement that we want to start the process. You, you're yeah. in agreement? Yeah. Okay. Would you say? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. That it? It's overdue. I, I, yeah. I just, <laughs> Wanted to know whether I should keep pushing it or not, or whatever. Well, yes. we heard that you were going to yeah, get a petition started, so we okay, figured we'd <laughs> short circuit that. Generation. And I apologize for all the stuff I sent you. Did you read it all? No. Cover to cover. <laughs> cover to cover. Night time. Lauren always warns me about those things. But I just deleted it immediately. Any other public comment? Go ahead, Yeah, so Denny Van Lu, 73 Liberty Street. Uh, chair of the Library Avenue Beach Association uh, in terms of the charter uh, for the Brazil Coastal Resiliency Project. Our association is unanimously in support of that. Uh, we also have been in contact with the Seaview Beach Association and also the Barbary Beach Association and the University of Connecticut. Uh, we're very pleased that Dave Anderson took time to come to our beach and walk with us on the beach about ideas on coastal resiliency. Uh, so I, I know that's an agenda item later, but we wanted to be on the record that we are very much in support of it. Thank Great, you. Thank you. Thanks. Did he mention the special taxing district you're going to be part of? He <laughs> <laughs> said that my house is being reassessed. I wasn't sure that meant. <laughs> thank you, man. Uh, anybody else? Yes. Uh, John Rasmus for Governor's Way. Um, I just thought I'd share with you, I uh, have talked with a lot of neighbors, a lot of people in town, a lot of concern about all the capital projects that have been discussed. And uh, I don't know if this is the forum to sure. kind of air uh, how I think a lot of people feel. Um, seems like between uh, the school, uh, between you know the library needing more money, now talking about a community center, we have empty schools, <coughs> seems like the budgets are increasing. I, I just hope that there's you know a lot of thought that goes into uh, you know bonding more. Uh, talking about hitting the debt ceiling um, of what the town can bond. I don't think that should be the threshold of you know we're close to it, but we're under it, so we should be bonding uh, more projects. Um, I think that's kind of a, a point where you say things are you know fairly uh, tapped out. Uh, that's when the banker says no more loans. So I, I hope the board uh, does think about that. Um, you know, I look at our education budget, and we have less students in the system. We have uh, we're closed. We close the school, and yet the uh, budgets still go up. And uh, I have to say, I went to a board of ed meeting, uh, talked to the superintendent. Um, you know, his response would be, "Well, the the budget did pass through referendum, the education budget." 
And I, I had some concern about uh, an email that he sent out to parents, um, which I believe, you know, basically uh, let the parents know that if the budget didn't pass, uh, there'd be uh, problems with uh, the new school uh, and, and with the playground. And, and I just think, I've been involved in town government before, that that's kind of out of bounds. And when I brought that up, um, it didn't seem like anybody was concerned about that. So I wasn't sure if you were aware of that. Um, I wasn't sure if you would have a concern over that. My feeling is town officials shouldn't be advocating for a budget uh, passing or being denied uh, once that, that referendum is set. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Thank you. appreciate it. Can you send us that email? If you sure. Have it? I do. Anybody else? Hearing none, I'm going to move on to number five. <clears throat> Presentation from Representative Copa Rubin and Memorial Day USA contest winners. If you yeah, yeah can't hurt. Good. Good evening and thank you. Thank you. There we go. Good evening. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. I think so. Well, you thank you, me. You're right in front of I hope you can hear her. <laughs> Well, last year I was speaking in a whisper. I was having vocal cord issues, so at least you can hear me now. Um, yeah. And that's good news. Um, each year, this is my ninth year, eighth, ninth year that we've done a um, Memorial Day essay contest. And I'll, I'll tell you briefly why it started. My first time as a state rep, I was on the stage with the rest of the state and the town dignitaries. And it really was remarkable that other than our band, there wasn't one student involved. And I know some of the schools are doing more and more, thank goodness, about Memorial Day, but I think like, I know you all agree with me that we have to make sure the next generation really, really honors Memorial Day and what it stands for and continues to do that. So it's really our responsibility as town leaders to make sure, and working with the schools, that um, we take the time to really, really to observe the holiday. And, so we started an essay contest, and my first essay winner is the South Warren College. So it's been going on for a few years, and I'm really proud of it. And we've had remarkable essays. So we started with just us and sixth graders, but as we just heard with the decline in enrollment, <coughs> there just aren't, even with our schools, three schools that we went to, there just aren't enough sixth graders anymore. So um, we went to the whole, whole middle school, um, the fifth, sixth, and seventh, fifth, sixth, and seventh? Eight. And it, okay, okay. So we got a bunch, from each school we got a bunch of uh, responses, but we asked the schools to pick up, to pick out some finalists. And um, this is the names of the finalists that could make it here tonight. There were a few more, um, but I just wanted to read them out. And, I, and I'm hoping that, and I'm inviting each of them to come up and read their essay. We had one of the re, um, finalists read the essay at the Memorial Day that you all got to hear, which was wonderful. We had, there was another one, Brown Middle School now has incorporated the essay, an essay finalist in their ceremony at their, their school, which I'm delighted with. So um, anyway, uh, so I just wanted to, I want to read their names, but I, if you would like to come up and read, and I hope you will, if the camera's on, everybody here wants you to be successful. And, it's no going to and, it's going to and I can guarantee the selectmen are going to clap, and everybody is. So it's a great time to learn public speaking, but we obviously, besides mom and dad, we don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Um, these are the finalists, and when they come up, they'll tell you which of the three schools are. Lady of Mercy had a great response, Brown, and Country School, and all three schools were um, just really, really responsive. Lillian Miller, who actually read her essay Memorial Day, and her, her dad's a Daniel Hand graduate, so that was pretty awesome. Alexis, I may have to put my glasses on, that was cool. Alexis, Kuspra, who I believe read her essay at, she did. at Brown. Yes. So that was, that's great. I'm glad, glad you timed that well. <laughs> Jack Hansen, Emma Strait, Katie Miller, Nora Stotts. I hope I said that right. I did. Thank you. Samantha Clare, Pierre, um, Pierce McMillan, and Amanda and Julia Corey, sisters. So we're delighted. We want to congratulate you. This year we changed the topic. We usually do like, what, why do we celebrate Memorial Day? But this year, those of you who were there know that we were honored with a, a speech from a gold star mom from Madison, a, a woman who had lost her son, Andrew Peterson Keel, 
um, in 2014. And for her to get up and speak, it was pretty remarkable and really was, it was, it was an honor to be there. And so the topic this year was, why do we honor Gold Star families? What's the importance? And I'll tell you, these kids really, really hit the mark. So I'd like to start. I'm going to call them by name and we come up. I mean, I'll start with Lillian. Lillian, you're just going to come up first. It is important that we recognize Gold Star families because they carry the loss of the sacrifice that our fallen service men and women have made, and their stories and contributions give so much back to the veterans community. When we think about great sacrifices given to protect our country, we typically think of fallen troops. But each of these brave men and women has a family. Gold Star families' losses are directly related to the remembrance intended on Memorial Day. As a 12-year-old, it, it is hard to fully comprehend what Gold Star families really do for our country. As a Blue Star child and daughter of a naval officer who has been deployed to Operation Enduring Freedom twice in my lifetime, I am thankful that I don't know. I had the opportunity to speak to Helen Kaiser Peterson, a Gold Star mother in Madison. Her son, Captain Andrew Michael Peter Peterson Keel, was a West Point graduate and commander of a Special Forces team in the United States Army. He was killed in Afghanistan on March 11, 2013, and you may recognize his name from the memorial sign on Route 79. Mrs. Kaiser Peterson helped me understand more about what Gold Star mothers and families do, as well as giving me some history on the organization. Gold Star Mothers was an organization founded by Grace Darling Seibel in 1918 and at first was only a group of mothers who had lost their sons in the Great War. They were there to comfort each other as well as give care to hospitalized soldiers far from their homes. It wasn't until January 5, 1929 that it became a national organization, American Gold Star Mothers Incorporated. Each state has its own chapter of Gold Star Mothers. Before I talked to Mrs. Kaiser Peterson, I had no idea that Gold Star Mothers did so much to give back to the veteran community. Part of being a gold, part of being a member of Gold Star, part of being a member of Gold Star Mothers is that you have to keep track of how many good deeds you've done for veterans, as well as how many miles you put into that. She told me that they are mothers on a mission. Every day, Gold Star families live with the sacrifice that their loved one has made. The most <coughs> important thing they can do is to remember their loved one. Mrs. Kaiser Peterson said, our service members go voluntarily go to war at the risk of being forgotten. Memorial Day is about remembering those who have given the ultimate sacrifice to keep our country safe. For Gold Star families, Every day is Memorial Day. Every day, they remember their loved one's bravery and sacrifice for our country. I'm proud that Madison recognizes Gold Star Families with its Gold Star Families Memorial in the Town Green Memorial Garden. On Memorial Day, it is important that we continue to remember our fallen warriors as well as the families they leave, leave behind. Our warriors should never be forgotten, and neither should their families. Lily goes to Brown Middle School. Alexis, is Alexis here? Alexis, you're at Brown Middle School also, right? You want me to hold this or you want to hold it? It's up to you. Remembering a hero. The things we do with our family are everything to us. But imagine being left with only the members. Members of a Gold Star family have to live without these things and are only able to see their full family in a dream. In order for us to enjoy a peaceful time with our family, we have to honor those who have lost theirs. Gold Star families are families who have lost a loved one in an act of bravery and battle. 
No family ever plans to become a Gold Star family. Becoming a Gold Star family was not an honor the family was looking to receive. Instead, this honor was suddenly thrust upon them by a messenger in a military uniform. This family now has the pride of knowing that their loved one has paid the ultimate sacrifice. They know that their father, mother, <coughs> daughter, son, brother, or sister has died for the freedom of 327.2 million people in the United States of America. <coughs> we need to recognize these Gold Star families for the sacrifice their family member has made. These families can never see or enjoy the com company of the one that they have lost. Each one of these Gold Star families knew that upon seeing their loved one go off to military training, that their family member may be called off to war. While most families with loved ones serving overseas in war will once again be reunited, these Gold Star families did not have that chance. This last Monday in May is an important day. It is Memorial Day. To those who have given their lives serving in uniform, we honor you today and every day. We are given the home of the free because of the brave the brave who have perished for our freedom. It is for this reason we need to honor the Gold Star families. Because of their loved ones, we can enjoy our freedom. Great job. Great job. Jake Hansen? Jake here? Okay. Emma Strait? She didn't bring it. Yeah. She didn't bring it to me. We didn't know she was going to be. You know what? Scott, would you get, there's an envelope, a small envelope, <laughs> and a lot of on the floor. Yep. <laughs> if you look through them, Emma, that's up to you. Take the whole thing and have them on the look. I'll just get it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back. <laughs> 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 Katie Miller. Katie, what school are you in? A Lady of Mercy? Wonderful. <clears throat> okay. Katie's from A Lady of Mercy School. Have you ever lost someone you love? Imagine someone in your family leaving to join the military and never seeing them again. On Memorial Day, we remember the brave men and women who lost their lives for our freedom. We also remind ourselves about their families. The families who lost their loved ones are called Gold Star families. These Gold Star families are making just as big of a sacrifice as the ones going into the military and should be recognized for their sacrifice. After World War I, Families of the military flew flags with a blue star. After a member of the family died, they would get a flag with a gold star. In 1947, they decided to give gold star lapel pins to the families. In 1928, a group of gold star mothers created the Gold Star Mothers Group, and since 1936, the last Sunday in September, we have the Gold Star Mothers Day. One of the reasons why we celebrate these families is because their loss is meaningful to us too. They sacrificed their loved ones for our country. And if they didn't make this sacrifice, we might not have such a great country as we do today. We are proud of the families who wanted their loved ones to fight for our freedom. We celebrate these families through the Pledge, Memorial Day, and Day. We want those special families to feel like they did the right thing, and that it means something to us. Another reason why we do this is because it is patriotic. As a country, we are very proud and honored to know that people risk their lives or their loved ones' lives for our freedom. It takes a very special person and a very special family to say that they want to go into the military. When we say the Pledge of Allegiance, we honor our freedom, our military, and the families who lost someone in battle. We may not think about Gold Star families every time we should to our flag, however, our heart will. In my opinion, we don't celebrate these families enough. One way we can celebrate them is by having every town mention the Gold Star families that live in the town. This Memorial Day, remember not only the sacrifices made by our military, but the sacrifices made by our Gold Star families. Had it not been for their sacrifice, along with their loved ones, we wouldn't be living in a country where we have freedom. Thank you, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I know Stott's going to be here, and her mom's going to get her citation. Her mom here? Katie's yes. mom? I'll have this morning. The citations up a little later. And are you Natalie? No. No. Who's mom? Katie's mom. Okay. Hey, okay. Katie. You guys really did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, citations for everybody when we finish, but I'll read the citation and then we'll go out and present them so you can get on with your meeting. Um, Samantha Claire also was going to come tonight. Her mom is here, I believe. Samantha? Mom? We'll see. Well, hopefully she'll be here. 
Um, Pierce, would you like to read your? And Pierce is from Our Lady of Mercy. And actually, Pierce was a final <coughs> also. Okay. Would you like me to hold it for you? Why Gold Star families are important. Memorial Day is a day of recognition to those who have died in battle fighting for America. On this day, we also celebrate Gold Star families, or at least that's what we're supposed to. Gold Star families have had to make a sacrifice that usually isn't noticed among the public. They let their family members go off to war, knowing very well that they could end up being killed, and for Gold Star families, that ends up being the case. The idea of Gold Star Families was originally created during World War II in August of 1947. There are a number of reasons for celebrating Gold Star Families. One of them is that we celebrate them to honor the legacy of our fallen heroes and to respect the families who have, who have had to give up so much for the sake of their country. A very important reason that we celebrate Gold Star Families is to honor those who have given their lives in order to protect America. Every year, countless amounts of families get, get word that their family members or loved ones were killed in battle. Sadly, the ones who don't have to go through this grief hardly know it exists. There are people who take time out of their days to honor others who lost their lives for America through ceremonies or tribute. They help the Gold Star families recover from losing someone they love and know that people care about how they're doing, which, make, which means much more than the average person would think. Another reason we celebrate Gold Star families is because they've had to make so many sacrifices for the sake of America. When someone lets their family member or their family member or loved one go to war without knowing that they might come back, to knowing that they might not come back, they have they have to make a decision to let their loved ones do what they want. When Gold Star Family Day comes around in September, it gives everyone who has lost a loved one to, to a war a chance to feel like their sacrifice wasn't wasn't meaningless, that others just like them have had to go through these terrible things as well, and that the entire nation cares. Today, we hardly think of folks our families when thinking of a Memorial Day. I believe they should get more respect and att attention from others on Memorial Day. So many Gold Star families get so many Gold Star so many so many Gold Star families get overlooked each year. Instead of being overshadowed by the thought of Memorial Day itself, America should view them in the same way they view all others who were lost fighting, because these loved ones are a part of them, or are a part of them, and that they can never get back. The more the people recognize these families, the better they'll feel about losing a loved one. Even if it doesn't completely make the pain go away, it helps. Memorial Day is a day to celebrate all who were lost fighting and the, their loved ones. Taking the time to do something for Gold Star families helps them more than you would believe. To others, it might just be another empty holiday, but to Gold Star families, it's a day to remember their loved ones. Excellent. Um, Emma, do you want to? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you've got the pretty green dress on the flag on. You've got to do it. Why are Gold Stars family? Well, why are Gold Star families important, you ask? Have you ever lost someone that you really love? Because Gold Star families have. They've lost someone they love dearly to war, to the battle that is helping our country stay alive. Gold Star families serve, whether you think it or not, their minds to their battlefield, battling with all the emotions that fill their head. When you lose someone, and especially to war, you feel helpless, especially because it could have all been preventable. These Gold Star families need the satisfaction that it wasn't all for nothing, that we care and that we will support them, that we'll help them get through their rough patches and help them get on, back on their feet. Because losing someone is terrible, the worst pain you could ever feel, and the best medicine is support, and these families need our support and help getting them back on their feet and fight. Fight for the families, fight for their well-being, and fight for hope. As Americans, we need to stand for our troops, our warriors, because they make a better tomorrow, especially those who've made the ultimate sacrifice for us. Gold Star families are important for many reasons, and they deserve our never-ending help and support because they fight, too. Um, let's have a straight from Brown. And last but not least, we have sisters, Amanda and Julia. Amanda, what school? Our Lady of Mercy, Amanda. 
Amanda and it's Corey? Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll read this. John F. Kennedy once said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is to not utter the words, but to live by them. Although this quote was said around 50 years ago, it still has a great effect on us today. On Memorial Day, we should show our appreciation for the heroes that died for. Many families have lost their loved ones fighting for our country's freedom. These families are known to us as Gold Star Families. Gold Star Families are relatives of the U.S. Armed Forces who have died in battle. Gold Star Families are important to us because we want to show them that their loss of a loved one was meaningful to us. We should celebrate Gold Star Families because they sacrifice their time away from their family members. Instead of making memories with them, they have to live their lives without them. These families go weeks, months, and sometimes even years without speaking to or seeing their loved ones. This can be very difficult being away from relatives for such a long time. Then, imagine how you would feel if you received a letter or got told that they passed away. You never even got to say goodbye or, to, or told them that you loved them one last time. Another reason that we should celebrate Gold Star families is because they impacted the soldiers' lives. The strength of our army is our soldiers. The strength of our soldiers is our families. The army recognizes that no one has given more for the nation than the families of the fallen. This quote was said by the U.S. Army and has never seen to be more true. These families have been there for the soldiers all their life. They were there for them when they needed it. They supported their decision of joining the armed forces even though that they knew that there was a risk of them dying in battle. The American public should feel inspired by Gold Star families. Some people don't even know what a Gold Star family is. It's important to know that Gold Star families exist because they have changed their lives for the better. They were there for them when they were there for their loved ones, supported their decisions, and sacrificed their time away from them. If they hadn't done this, our country wouldn't be known as the land of the free. We should celebrate Gold Star families by honoring their past away loved ones and by sending them letters telling them how grateful we are for what they did for our country. We can create a memorial stone in, a, in memory of a soldier and place it somewhere special to their family. Memorial Day is a day where we honor those who have died fighting for our country. We should also remember and keep their families in our hearts. Gold Star families made many sacrifices when their loved ones left to join the armed forces. They knew that they would probably never see them again, but they let them go anyway for our country. Without Gold Star Families, we wouldn't be living in a free country like it is today. Thank you, Gold Star Families, for, for everything you've done for our country. This is Amanda Kerr from Our Lady of Mercy, and now we welcome her sister, Julia. We saved the best for last, is that what they said? They all right, that's hard to say. Gold Star Families. Memorial Day is known as a holiday to recognize those who died in conflict and to celebrate the beginning of summer, but people often forget to acknowledge those who also sacrifice for our safety, Gold Star Families. Gold Star Families are the immediate relatives of the members of the military that have been killed during war or government activities. Although most people use Memorial Day and other patriotic holidays to remember fallen soldiers from combat, it is essential to also recognize Gold Star families in their history as honorable U.S. citizens, their ultimate sacrifice of losing a loved one, and their strength they give to the people that protect their country. Gold Star families have been an important part of our nation since the beginning of World War I. The families of the soldiers in war began to tradition of hanging blue star flags to represent their fighting family members, and when soldiers unfortunately died, the blue star was replaced with the gold one. During this war, people began to understand that not only do soldiers serve their country, but their families do too. To recognize the mother's suffering when they lose a child, President Wilson approved Gold Star Mothers, and 10 years later, the Gold Star Mo Mothers Incorporated was formed. As the, year went, as the years went by and more soldiers had passed away, the nation felt it was necessary to honor the whole family. And as a result, the military was required to give Gold Star pins to all the immediate relatives of fallen soldiers. Although the Gold Star tradition was formed in the First World War, our country must continue to remember the Gold Star families and their lost loved ones' legacies of glory and honor. Ever since the first Gold Star was hung in the 1900s, the families who have lost the people closest to them have been able to express their mourning and the pride they have in honor of their deceased. Gold Star families may not have sacrificed their lives, but they sacrificed their time with their loved one in order to protect America. Many families in the country have the freedom to be together every day because Gold Star families put other families before their own. They deserve more recognition and honor than our, fam than our nation could ever give because they lost a part of themselves for our freedom. 
Gold Star families are just as much heroes as their fallen relatives because as someone once said, the only thing harder than being a soldier is loving one. Gold Star families not only give their family time to America, but they also give their strength. They support and love the soldiers and allow them to leave their home for the greater good. These families give the soldiers something more to fight for and encourage them to risk their life for their country. A mother of an American sol soldier once said, the true soldier fights not because he hates what is in front of him, but because he loves what is behind him. Gold Star families fill their soldier with power, hope, and love to help them during work in conflict. Brian Lynn, a writer and reporter said, the Army may be our country's strength, but a soldier's strength comes from their family. The Gold Star families are one of the most powerful and generous role models for our country. For generations, they have made the ultimate sacrifice to their ultimate sacrifice to keep the USA safe. As our nation shall wait to Memorial Day, America should justly honor those who lost their lives for our country and should, should return the strong support and love to the Gold Star families that they give for our country's freedom. Thank you. Can we get a picture with you and all the other I just want to tell, I want to read one citation, Tom, because sure. afterwards all the families and, and the finalists who are going to go out and get quarter out of here, we'll take pictures and we'll get the well, citation. Um, I didn't probably say thank you, Julia, that was beautiful. Thank you. Um, doesn't it make you feel that we're in okay shape here in these kids? Isn't this amazing? I just, I have to tell you, every year they get better, and I just think this year was just, they were remarkable. It was very difficult to pick. This is cite, state citation for each finalist. And it reads, was introduced by myself and Senator Christine Cohn. It hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulation to, and he just happens to be Lillian, in recognition of winning the 2019 Memorial Day Essay Contest and being named the top author for your Memorial Day Essay. Your writing was thoughtful and moving. You captured the essence of this important day of remembrance. Today, we offer our sincerest congratulations on this accomplishment, and the entire membership of the General Assembly wishes you best wishes on this occasion and expresses hope for continued success and was signed by the President of the Senate, Speaker of the House, and Secretary of the State. As I said, each person will get it and then we can take a picture. Did all the finalists want to come up and we'll take a picture with this like them? Yeah. So we're doing the Macarena? Yes. yes. <laughs> You're leading us. Where do you want to lead us, Dave? <laughs> Why don't we have you in the back of the students right in front of you? Spencer, you better come back and do Okay. Oh, we'll do cell phones first. All right, smile this way. One, two, three. Just keep smiling for a little bit. Sorry about this. Keep smiling. I know. Sorry.
giving you a minute to. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Six, discuss take action to call a public hearing on July 22nd, 2019 at 6.45 p.m. to solicit input on an application received for the DRS Neighborhood Assistant Tax Grant Program. So moved. Second. Please discuss it. Second. 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 This is a, I'm just trying to connect things. Yeah, this is a program where if you donate to a specific group, yeah. you get a tax credit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, the purpose is to try to stimulate some of these. We tried this last year too. We didn't get a take this year. So it's no specific project. No, it's, it's just the I program hear. itself. Yeah. Yeah. Any other discussion? Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number seven. Discuss and take action to approve the charge of the Coastal Resiliency Committee. So moved. Second. Discussion. Um, you'll notice um, the charge is in there. We made the changes that we discussed at our last meeting when we talked about this. So, shouldn't really be any, I mean, always can discuss, but there's, I think we pretty much covered it last time. And just remind me, so you're in or out? In. Sorry? You're in? Yes. All right. Yes. So I'm, I'm listed as one of the uh, members of the committee. Um, we discussed doing a, uh, a large public outreach effort to try to solicit interest in serving on the commission. So, um, assuming you guys pass this tonight, that'll be the next step. Um, so I'll work with Tom and whoever Tom feels appropriate to uh, take that next step. And are we appointing through parties of, or through the Board of Selectmen? Uh, through the Board of Selectmen, it was my understanding, but I mean, so it's up to you guys for discussion. I think, I think one of the things we wanted to do was we wanted to try to cast a wide net in terms of, you know, people to come on the committee. How so, like we do the building committee, so maybe we interview or something Yeah, like that, would, or? that would be my thought, is we'd, we'd solicit uh, some application process, yeah. then Collectively, we figure out how to yeah. pull that yeah, down and do interviews. Yeah. yeah, I think that's great. Uh, I certainly uh, continue to support this, so I'm hoping we uh, move ahead and approve it today. Oh, well, here's your chance, huh? <laughs> yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Number eight, discuss to take action to authorize the first selectman to enter into a multi year contract between the town of Madison and Tyler Technologies for the newest implementation of the financial, human resource, and payroll software system subject to town council. Subject council approval. Now, meeting. Now, at that point, they did not, we did not have approval. Yeah, when we, we did the agenda last week, it was still being reviewed by town council, so we wanted okay. to make sure. Okay, so you know what it is? It's council SEL. We got CIL. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. So we're crossing it off anyway. <laughs> it's not subject. It's already been. Oh, it's, 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 it's already been. Approved. It's already been. Approved. Yeah. We can just remove that. So moved. Second. <laughs> but with amended, right? So we're saying yeah. so without subject. So we're subject to town council approval. Yeah. Right. We have a, a motion and a second. Discussion? It's probably worthy of some just to update, I think, because sure. um, this represents a, a slight change in plans. Um, it does, it does. Um, I'm not sure, I assume that's my cue. Yes, yes. QR. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, Stacy and I have been working on this and we've included a committee of 15 people. It's, it's four department heads, HR departments from both the town and the school district, the finance director and myself, the technology director. Uh, and the, basically the whole finance department has participated in this and other members from technology as well. Basically what happened was in the first year that the CIP plan, uh, the, the whole program was implemented, our first submission uh, included out in what was then years four and five, uh, replacement of the Phoenix financial HR payroll system. And uh, it's been on the books in CIP for going on four years now. It's got two years of funding in it. Currently it's the 1920 year, which is about to begin, and then the 2021 year. 
Uh, in that first year, we've got a $225,000 request, and we've got a $200,000 request in the 2021 year. Uh, you'll, there's, a, there's another item on your agenda where we're asking for special appropriation to make the second year available now as well so that we have all of the funding that we would need in place. Basically, we thought that at one point we would be calling Phoenix and telling them that unfortunately we were going to move on to a, a more current technology. Uh, surprise, surprise, they called us and said we're going to sunset the product and it's not going, it's basically six months ahead of our anticipated schedule. So while it's not a total surprise, the technology was old, the company had been acquired several times. I actually had recapped this in a memo that uh, Lauren had sent out to all members of the poll boards. Um, and this affects Board of Education, Board of Selectmen, and Board of Finance. And it basically recounts that you know we're moving the timetable up, unfortunately, a little bit beyond our control. Um, and that generally something of this size to implement it's estimated it takes 18 to 24 months to do. We've basically got 12 months of support left on the old product. So I think that we can work out um, an accelerated schedule to get the most critical functions up and running within a 12 month period and, and work on as much data conversion as we can in that time. But also we might defer some of the um, data conversion uh, with the same amount of funds, not asking for additional funds on that. But you know, I believe that we can work with the timetable and, and get it implemented as quickly as possible so we have a functional system that does have support. Um, we had defended this, pro this project you know, multiple times through CIP. Um, it's a cloud-based solution as opposed to a self-hosted solution. Uh, it's, it's a full um, ERP solution. It's, it's a real employee management product as well as a full financial system. And what we've done, and, and what I've outlined here, was the RFP process was basically conducted by the consortium that we are a member of, a consortium that we are a member of called Sourcewell. They had a competitive product. We've actually negotiated the pricing down a little bit below that. Um, and that uh, it's, it's a significantly expensive project. I understand why you'd like to talk about it for sure. Um, but the implementation, the one-time implementation acquisition First year fees, including data conversion that we're estimating is approximately comes up to uh, $400,000. So there's an additional $25,000, which I think is great to have the additional funding. We're only going to spend as we go. Um, you spend up front on the actual service. Uh, the software as a service model is, is that as soon as the software becomes available for our use so that we can start the conversion, implementation, configuration, conversion processes. Uh, that's when we start paying the annual fee, and then the implementation as we go, module by module, the configuration services uh, and the professional services from this company, uh, we pay basically by the hour. And there are estimates, very strong estimates in the contract. I believe you have a draft copy of the contract. And, and the total one-time charges, as I said, were estimated to be, it's essentially just under 300000 plus the $100,000 annual recurring fee. The operating budgets will be impacted for the first time in 2021, so we do have the coming year to make the appropriate budget requests to, to go forward. It is a three-year term on the initial term, um, and that's uh, the annual fee is recurring, as I said, and that's for the service, the cloud-based service. So I'm not sure if I've answered or if I've created more questions than I've answered <laughs> with this, um, but I'd be happy to uh, Actually, I think one of the most impressive things you've done, Art, is four years ago you were able to estimate pretty accurately how much this was going to cost us. Right. It was. Um, I never liked seeing that number, by the way. But nobody likes <laughs> seeing that number. But I knew that it was going to be an expensive project, um, and we did do some research and we looked at what were then current prices for similar products, including this product, and uh, estimated what it would be with some inflation. So it is, uh, as I said, it's a big conversion project also. It's one of the biggest ones that we'll probably ever undertake. Uh, but it's, it's um, very necessary as we're losing support. And even before that, we knew that we were behind the times on, on that. So. I, I think, Art um, and Stacey, you know, as you mentioned, you've, you've long made the case um, for the conversion. It's unfortunate that the timeline has been forced upon you. Um, but. Uh, because you've been considering it, I think you're in a pretty good place. Um, 
a project like this um, is, uh, is a big one, and we've talked about organizational capacity to, to do this, and even more so now with a compressed timeline. So I think from, from my perspective, what I'd like um, is that we find a, a mechanism for regular updates on, on how the, the project is going, any high level um, planning and implementation documents that you receive from the software company. Not an exploded Gantt chart, but a really high level one to give us a sense of how you're progressing as you're progressing through. Um, that allows us to stay in step with where you are um, in the um, unfortunate circumstances where, where you might need some further um, support from the Tau. I think it, it just is well advised that you just keep us up to speed. Sure. Yeah, I think the more, to reiterate, the more communication the better. So I think that helps us make decisions along the way. Sure. And then there's no surprises. So. Uh, we got an opportunity to speak earlier, so not to jump over you guys, but um, which I appreciate. That was very, very helpful, and I thank to both of you for doing that. Um, I think most of my questions were answered. I was comforted in the fact that um, the fee-for-service model where there are implementation days available, but we may or may not use them. We may use more in one area, not another area, but I think that's, that's comforting to know that um, it's flexible and we don't have to spend it if we don't need it. So um, I, I feel good about it, so thanks. Anybody else? Um, I just have a few more questions. Um, um, I am so impressed with the amount of staff time that went into uh, researching all of this and coming forward with what looks like the optimal solution for us. Um, um, I've been through a couple of conversions in my past, so I had a few more questions, and I'll try to keep them very simple. Um, whether the data that is entered into this system is kept here or in the cloud, I'm not sure, but from the public's perspective, I'm looking for the types of assurances that the personal data especially, social security numbers and the kinds of things that uh, trouble us so when they get out, you know, um, are we satisfied with the degrees of protection that the data is protected not only from uh, outside forces which tempt to break in and misuse it, but as well from um, employees of the firm, uh, is it Tyler and others, uh, who has access to this stuff and well, what are we doing to, the best we can to protect it? Well, it is cloud-based, and that's where the data resides, in the cloud. And they do rely on industry standard, uh, industry standards for data protection. Now, nobody is 100% safe from cybersecurity problems. Many, many problems will always originate from within the organization by someone who's supposed to be in there that clicks on the wrong link for something, you know. And cybersecurity concerns are something that are in the forefront of our, you know, thinking all the time. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, again, it, it, it is sort of a big concern. But in the Tyler contract document, they do describe their data center. They talk about their redundant power supplies and their redundancy. And they talk about their SOC1 and SOC2 audits that they undergo annually uh, if we want to sign a a uh, non-disclosure agreement, we can get copies of those, which we certainly can, but they pass their audits in that regard. And those are, you know, and, and I don't pretend to be an expert on what those audit certifications mean, but they basically say that all of the internal controls are in place. The SOC1, as I understand it, is more along the lines for payroll information, and SOC2 are other financial um, doc, sort of uh, you know, information. Also, any credit card payments that they would take, they have the PCI compliance uh, certification as well. So while nothing is 100%, you know, I would say that Tyler Technologies, they do have modules, which we're not purchasing their cybersecurity modules, but they do have products that um, are intended to protect other organizations through cybersecurity. They are aware of it. Nothing is bulletproof ever, but Again, they are a very large company over, there's I believe 95 Connecticut customers for, for this particular product units. And so are, you're, you're, you're comfortable that they're meeting the I'm highest levels of industry standards? I'm, I'm as comfortable as any IT director could be, which is never <laughs> comfortable. You know, we're always very, very concerned for data security, privacy, um, and it's as important for our 
employees as it is for constituents, your, your constituents, the taxpayers, and the... Uh, there will be taxpayer information in the database? Uh, no, not to okay. any great extent at this point, but taxpayer information exists and most of that's public now, so at least in that regard. But, um, you know, as far as employee information, they have all the audit controls in place to satisfy those uh, standards. Can I just can I jump in for one quick second? Oh, sure. So, so to, to that point, are related, um, have you guys had an opportunity to speak with maybe some of the other towns that have implemented MUNIS such that we can a, leverage their experience, their lessons learned on implementation, um, and have we heard anything through the grapevine that suggests good, the bad, the ugly? I think that it's pretty clear. Well, number one, of the, the escribe towns, 11 of the 15 towns now are Munis customers, and that doesn't count us at the moment if we go, if we're approved. Um, I can tell you that not a single financial system implementation is going to be fun. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I actually converted from a mainframe. Stacy thinks it's going to be fun. She thinks it's going to be fun, but I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate that it's, it's going to be quite a challenge. Um, you know, I think that there's so many unknowns that we are prepared to need to be flexible and to, you know, it, it almost doesn't much matter um, unless somebody's come directly from the same exact system we're on going to this one. Munis has converted many, though. So I think that the fact that they've got such a large con Connecticut, um, you know, market share, yes, that I think that they, you know, they obviously are getting them converted. So speaking to others, the SCROG uh, IT committees uh, and meeting and talking about everything from cybersecurity to financial systems and uh, the CASBO group, which is the Connecticut Association of uh, School Business Officials. Uh, they've met also. And they've they've had multiple competitive products demoed, including Munis. Isn't that, Correct. Isn't that right? So, you know, we've heard everything from smooth to bumpy, and uh, I'm expecting somewhere in between. I see the headline now: smooth, but bumpy. No, no, that's, that's a range. Like an that's a range. That's a range. <laughs> that's a range. <laughs> so my it's exactly the same, only difference. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Great answer. Thank you. My, my final right. question, I'm not even sure who to address it to, but there are some liability uh, limits uh, contained in the contract. Right. And I was just looking for assurance that we check them with Kerma to make sure Kerma's happy with what these limits are. I have asked Floyd Dugas to review the contract, and that's the extent to which I've looked for comfort uh, in that regard. The town does carry some cybersecurity uh, insurance through Kerma on our own, in addition to those limits, and those are fairly standard for contract limits in the town. Uh, perhaps, Lauren, um, <coughs> it would be prudent to check with Kerma to see if these are appropriate limits. I can certainly forward it to them, but I can I, I can re re reiterate what Arch said that these are standard. Um, limits that I would look at if I was looking for at a contract. <coughs> so I don't anticipate there being anything that Kerma feels is lacking. But I can certainly forward that on and send you guys a response. Uh, I, I just want to see that it happens. I don't need the, <laughs> the feedback. But but I, I think these limits should be set in conformance to with what, confirm, uh, what Kerma feels is appropriate. That's my final point. Thank you, Tom. Great. Thank you. Okay. Without it, hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Number nine, discuss and take action to approve a special appropriation request in the amount of $200,000 for the implementation of the MUNIS financial um, human resource and payroll software system. So moved. Second. Discussion? I think we should just make clear what time <coughs> period this is for. Sure. This is. This is the, year, the second of the two years that this project was originally targeted for. We're asking that that 200000 be moved to become available on July 1, or essentially now because it's a capital fund. Uh, I didn't feel, and Stacy and I agreed, that we shouldn't be committing to a project without having the funds there to back it up. So we, we, we wanted to have all the funds available at the beginning of the project. And I promise you I won't spend any more than we actually need in services. Thank you. Well said. <laughs> I'll make sure he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> as she sits over his shoulder right now. <laughs> Interesting. All in favor? Aye. Yes. And discuss and take action to award the contract between the town of Madison and the Fire Maddox Supply Company as of July 1st, 2019 for the purchase of a Peterbilt slash Pierce tanker in the amount of $548,622. So moved. Second. Part this makes your, yours look like chump change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was thinking that. I was happy to see that. Uh, <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 11, discussing take action to accept a grant in an amount of up to $15,000 for Workforce Alliance to provide funding for a Madison Youth and Family Services Summer Youth Employment Program. This program will reimburse the town for wages paid for nine youth job places with program coordination and job coaching to be provided by existing Madison Youth and Family Services staff. So moved. Second. Scott, you want to collaborate on this? I, I, I know I, you waited till we had to wait a while to find out exactly how much. Yeah, so the, yeah, the grant's always, um, we, we had some assurance that we were going to get the grant, but we didn't have a number, and, right. and that went back and forth quite a bit. So I apologize. The timing on this is always a little tricky because we're trying to uh, recruit the placements, <laughs> recruit the kids. At the same time, we don't know how much grant we're going to have. So it's a pretty dynamic process as we're going through the, usually the, toward the tail end of May and mostly into June. So what we know is that we have the, now we do, as of like last week, we have the 15 grand in the grant. Um, we were able to identify uh, nine jobs, so six placements, those include three town departments. The senior services um, has one job. Our, for the first time this year, Madison Facilities has uh, two jobs and we're gonna place one of the kids ourselves in, on our department. Um, we have uh, What's Cooking is providing a placement, the Mercy Center is providing a placement, and we have two jobs at the Guilford Yacht Club. Uh, so we're, we're pretty pleased. It's, it's actually, this is the most kids we've had in this program. Um, and uh, I don't know if there's any questions. Most of, so this grant reimburses the town to pay the wages for these kids to have uh, these placements. And each kid, in order to qualify for the grant, has to have some form of workplace barrier, uh, whether it's uh, some kind of uh, disability or something that would either emotionally or socially get in their way of obtaining a job. So it helps to, to, to remove that gap for a lot of kids to have this kind of experience. How does the 15000 compare to last year's? Uh, last year, we had close to that. I think we had around 14, 14 5. So it's, it, it went up a little bit this year. And last year, did we fully? You know, spend it all. The yeah. Way, yeah. Spend. Yeah. Well, so, what, with the way it's set up, you have to um, allocate up to you have to allocate at least seventy percent of that towards the wages, and then the remainder you can utilize for program support and a little bit of admin. Uh, this year, we're probably going to spend almost all of it in wages. We won't take us back as much. Great. Yeah. So it's a really good program. Good experience. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Governor. <laughs> Number 12, discuss and take action to approve the appointment of Jessica DeMar to the Inland Wetlands Committee alternate for a term to expire January 1st, 2020. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 13, discuss and take action to approve the appointment of Laura Becker to the Bower Park Advisory Committee for a term to expire January 1st, 2021. So, so moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 14 is tax abatements and refunds in the amount of $1,868.28. Any discussion on those? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Number 15, strategic plan update. Um, so I sent around with uh, the finished version of the, of the uh, strategic plan that we worked on as a, as a board, sent around to everybody, and um, you know, it's my feeling that um, we've done our job here in getting this together, and now it's time to get public input. And so um, uh, Lauren has come up with um, potential timeline calendar for some, some of the things that we need to do. In-person meetings at Polson Middle School, one or two public hearings, Board of Selectmen and internal stakeholders present draft to the public, and she's calling for that the weeks of 722 and 729. And draft revision meetings, in-person meetings in town campus as needed to revise the document based on public comment. The Board of Selectmen and the project manager, that'd be the week of August 5th. 
Uh, stakeholder input would be electronic, except review and comments from other elected boards and directors for the, during the week of 8 12. And draft adoption by the, at the Board of Selectmen meeting on Monday, August 26th. So, what does everybody think about that? I think it's time. I think we, we've, we've put a lot of energy into getting to this point, and we've, um, we've created a document now that's ready for public input and, um, and public revision, quite yeah. frankly, right? So this is, this is very much a working draft um, that um, we, can, we can discuss. I, I, we don't have uh, any action on here. Right, I, I was going to ask to open the agenda. So, so uh, I think, yeah, we probably should take the formal next steps of, of moving forward with the public process. Yeah, so if you so, will open the agenda. So I, I would move that we open hang the on, agenda. Hang on, hang on, before you go. So, so um, I just want to make sure I understand the flow. So I'm almost thinking that we need to get the elected bo boards and directors input prior to the public hearing so that we have it baked in and then we're presenting a unified approach as well, opposed to right now it's at least the way I'm, and I'm I apologize I'm reading it for the first time so I, I think it's the opposite so do we want to think about that for a sec so we the, the early days of this process was involving the other boards and so the draft that we've got and they haven't seen the draft since have they? is is a result of I'm just wondering, at least the input. chairs or the elected officials, I would think we, it's worthy of us gaining their perspective. Sure, we give that up to them. Yeah, That's first, and, and asking for some input maybe before we take it to the public. I, I, I don't think we need to re-solicit the input from the boards. Um, I think they're going to have ample opportunity to, to weigh in in, yeah. in the public process. I mean, our workshops, I think, I think we had, we had very good um, participation yeah. by all of the, you know, um, the boards, as well as um, you know, town employees. So I'm just worried they haven't seen the outcome and the fruits of the labor of, of that process at this we point. Get it so, home tomorrow. Yeah. I and mean, we can we can circulate it. But yeah. You know, I I I think it's respectful to, to show it to them, and I don't think we need a formal meeting. I think we just no. circulate the existing draft. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any, any yeah. final That's comments? Right. Send it. So it's sort of, but I think we still open. stick with the with the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I don't disagree with that. You're right. Okay, so you were. So I move that we open the agenda for the purpose of um, discussing and taking action on a on a, a public workshop structure and timeline. Is Lauren? Does that work? So at this point, all that you really need to approve tonight is to discuss and take action to call a public hearing at Polson Middle School during the week of. July 22nd or 29th, pending availability of Polson Auditorium. What she said. I like that motion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we will. We need to uh, vote, vote to open the agenda. Right. So we have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then second. I'll make that motion. Thank I'll you, second. Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> and you made the motion. And I'll second it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's great. Look at that. We're making things happen. Move that along. Okay, number 16, Beach Pass update. Okay, as I mentioned before. Scott's here. Um, I saw him walk by. I'm sorry? Scott's here. I think I saw him walk by a little while ago. I don't know if he's still here. Uh, he was. I don't know yeah. if he's still here. Because uh, there was a commitment. Um, um, anyway, so I had a chance to get into the Beach Rec office today and actually work with them while they were doing some passes. And. Um, it's, it's a lot better to, to see it from that side because you can see what looks like it's not going as well as it should. So um, we, have, we have got the uh, Comp Plus people, we had them involved over the weekend when we started to see that there were a couple of problems and we got them involved. And they've been very respectful of listening to what people in town are saying. I'm actually sending them emails from people who are, you know, having a problem with the system. And so they're going to they're gonna look at this stuff and try to incorporate the changes. As Scott would say, we probably need some tweaks. Hmm. I would say we probably need a little more than tweaks, but, <laughs> but um, you know, the, the good news is um, people are getting their passes. Um, the line here was not bad today. It moved along. We had, we had a couple of glitches, but um, staff was able to fix those up. Um, I think I said we sold over 1,300 passes already, so that's a good start in June. Um, and I think we'll probably be, between people doing it online and people coming back, coming in here, you know, I think before the end of the week we'll have a lot more uh, activity. So. so Tom, is the issue just 
usage of the of the online system? Is it confusing? Or there's, is, there's, is it, are there? It's there's time a couple of things. They, they put one explanation in, in the instructions that said, what, what they meant to say was, your, your account number, you know, when you get your account number, it's going to be three or four digits, <clears throat> but it has to be nine. So you have to front fill with zeros. So if it's one, two, three, four, you have to put five zeros and then one, two, three, four. But the way they described it, I said, Scott, I don't, I don't even know what that means. You know, so there's a little bit of <clears throat> communication issue. Um, a lot of it is people getting frustrated because it doesn't work right away. You know, um, like for instance, I went online and I went, I went online at the same time. She had her spend in six minutes. And I just gave up because I, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a deeper meaning. Oh, <laughs> well, she had that mind. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so, so I've, heard, I've heard that comment <clears throat> for people, and I don't know if it's people that are more tech savvy than others too, but I think the people that are less tech savvy are certainly struggling with the time to complete. I mean, I've heard some people say it takes upwards of an hour and couldn't get through it or gave up. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's certainly so concerning. Are, but I think in talking to Scott. Just, just to sort of end that point on a, on a positive note, he did say, you know, people need to recognize that they need to come into the Beach and Rec office, and there's assistance there to help them. So, yeah. you know, people, I think, just need to understand that. So the Beach Rec office and the surf club. And the surf club, right. We have right, stacking down there. Right. Um, and so, you know, um, this is a learning experience. We're learning, and, um, you know, it, it's going to, the, the most interesting part of this process will be when we get to uh, enforcement, which will be next week. Do you know anything about um, the, the, was there any consideration of prorating? I know the, um, a couple of the concerns I've heard from people is that, you know, I'm paying the same amount that I would have paid if it was May as paying for now. Is it, is that, was that ever discussed? They've been able to come in. We, no, nobody's lost an opportunity to go to the surf club. Or no, 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 I'm just saying they're paying the same amount on the sticker as opposed to, you know, they're getting the sticker now and whatever it is. But they've been able to use, but they've been able to use the surf club without charge. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the other question I have is data privacy, similar to what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Do we have, uh, I, I haven't done mine yet, so full disclosure, but I've heard that you upload your driver's license and your registration and that some people might be a little nervous about doing that um, and putting that online. Is there, is that information protected? Do we know? That's yes, correct. No. <laughs> I have to uh, confess this is not an IT department project, yeah. Um, so I'm not familiar with it. But if it's a scan of a document, it's a lot safer in the in the form of a right. chart yeah. than yeah. it is in, in actual data field. Again, though, it's I can't I haven't seen that contract at all, so I don't know what they're they what they're going to play. They did That's speak right. to data security in one of their prior presentations, and were emphatic that no information would be shared outside of our our system that they wouldn't you know, in other words they wouldn't use it to data mine or to yeah, sell right. or that it was it. it was our information our information only and um, that um, that they had security measures in place a lot of the information we already have um, in, in our own system so a lot of it's not new information yeah so, right Tom, looking ahead, um, when the uh, town of Madison issues a uh, parking ticket, we have an appeals mechanism for right. the public that isn't happy. Is there an appeals mechanism built into this system? Yeah. And who, who, who or what is that appeal? Um, to? <clears throat> well, the way it works is that Com plus, you know, we, we, we send a ticket. They get a ticket. If they pay it, they pay it. It comes back, you know, Com plus handles that whole thing. Mm -hmm. If there's an appeal of the ticket, it goes back to Scott. Because this is not through the police department, this is through the rec department. Are we in any way putting a town employee in a very awkward position of having to handle appeals like that? No, I don't think so, because I mean he, he's very familiar with why a ticket was written in the first place and what you know what what was going on mm -hmm. uh, and with the system. So that for instance, when they issue a ticket, they also can attach a picture of what the violation was. So if there's any question, mm -hmm. you know, Scott will have the, the backup of looking at the picture and seeing what it was. Well, I'm willing to see how that works. If, if it becomes problematic, I'm thinking that we have another mechanism that we might employ. I, how this whole system is about flexibility and, you know, and, yeah. yeah, so we're, 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 we're into a new, you know, whole new uh, realm of 
how we handle this stuff. So we, yeah. we, we're going to be looking at everything. Let's go back to Scott's first words, right? I'm oh, sorry? There, there are tweaks we need to make. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll be, yeah, we'll be tweaking the process along the way. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All good. Uh, number 17, Island Avenue School lease update. I don't know what to tell you other than they came in last week and we signed the lease. And uh, we're on our way. So uh, they will be, they will be, we originally had said I think August 6th and Dilly said they'll be uh, definitely by August 1st. So we're letting them go in. Uh, they've been through the building and with art to look at uh, some of the technology or whatever that might be left behind that, you know, we have no use for. Um, and Bill's been very, uh, you know, Instead of throwing everything, everything away that's there, he's leaving it because they, they'll, you know, they'll use it. Potentially use it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. And are they, if they don't want to use it, are they responsible then for getting yeah. rid of it? Yeah. That's good. Um, what, what was the final agreement, um, I don't remember, that was, um, that you guys ended on in terms of the payment structure? Is it X so percent? 150,000 now. Uh, I'll give you the numbers. Hold on a second. So there's 200. Yeah. 535 is the total that's due. 150,000 is going to be the down payment from signing the contract. The difference between 150,000 and two thirds of the 535 will be paid before they enter the building. And then the final third will be paid, I believe the date January is January 6th? 6th? Yeah. Feb 6th. Yep. Yeah. Right, but it's part of the DRS. Okay. Yeah. So they have paid the 150 already. So that's 178,000. Yeah, Everything except 178,000 we paid before they enter the building. And they know it's 10 days? Yes. I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. From signature. Yeah. Great. Any other? Thanks for shepherding that. That's awesome. No problem. Uh, number 18, public comment? No, Gus. Just a question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got a comment. Oh, okay. These lease papers, That's just like going into a board. specific account or are they just going into the general fund? They'll be going into the general fund. Hmm? Into the general fund. Okay, I didn't know whether there were any, any restrictions on holding them for a while. No, because we've, we've um, I think. I was thinking of how I would want to just spend it. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you were. <laughs> um, but I think we approved some of the expenses Bruce. that we, we didn't had to right? Give me a break. We, we didn't approve it. Well, that's right, we didn't because yeah. we were. We didn't do, yeah, we didn't want to do one without the other. Okay. <clears throat> Stop plugging trouble. He doesn't know how not to. Okay, um, anything else? Um, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye.